Hello, I'm Pastor Pete Contreras here at the Blue Island Public Library, and today I was asked to speak to you about uh, my father, uh, who came to Blue Island in the early 20s, and uh, he was a, a railroad worker uh, most of his life. Uh, my father crossed the border from Mexico into Arizona in 1905. He came from, it comes from a small town called Romita, Guanajuato, in Mexico. In 1905, he was 15 years old. He was born in 1890. And uh, the way he tell, told us is that he, when he crossed the border, he was hungry. And, uh, and as he was walking down some tracks, there was uh, like a crust of bread. And he picked it up. To, he had to shake the ants off of it to, to eat it. And as they began to eat, there were some Indians showed up on horseback. You got to remember this is uh, 1905. And, and he would tell us kids, I thought the guys were going to eat me. But no, instead they took me to a place and they fed me. They took me to a railroad camp, uh, and since I was young, since, pardon me, since he was young, uh, they put him to work with the cook. And my dad would tell us, boy, it was like heaven. I was hungry, and here I'm working with the cook. I was bringing water and all these type of little jobs, and I had all the food that I could eat. And as time went on, I began working with the railroad, and I began moving east, and I ended up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I married my first wife, and we had two children. The oldest, uh, my oldest daughter, her name was Ramona. My wife's uh, name was Antonia, and also we had a, a, a son. He had, a, he had a son named Amador, Amador Contreras, and they were both born in uh, in New Mexico. My sister Ramona was born in uh, 1913, and my brother Amador was born in 1915. But uh, about 1918, uh, their mother passed away, and my, my father sent my brother, who was then young, to Mexico, and he was being raised by one of his, his older sister. Her name was Blasa, and that was in uh, Laredo, Mexico. And my sister was raised by the Bravo family. She, her, her mom was a Bravo, her grandmother was a Bravo, and uh, th they were raised, and my brother then came to the States when he was about uh, 15 years old. And as I said, my, my, my dad moved on from Albuquerque and ended up in Kansas City. And there he met uh, my mother, whose name was Micaela Contreras. And she was uh, uh, born in 1900. And uh, she, um, they were married and they had uh, eight children. Well, actually there were more, but a couple had died. And my oldest sister, her name was Angelita Madrigal, she was born in a town called, called Galesburg, Illinois. In Galesburg, Illinois, there was a lot of Mexican workers and they mainly worked on the railroad. And my sister, Angelita, was born there in 1921. And uh, my dad uh, was in, uh, working for the railroad. And during that time, the railroad workers, they were, by the, electric, the railroad company, were given up. Uh, Boxcars. They live in boxcars. They would divide a boxcar, and they would live in these boxcars. They'd have coal stoves to keep them warm, and of course it was very primitive, but at least it gave them some protection. And for the first years, that's where my father lived. And then he moved to Blue Island. Uh, I'm going to say about 1922, and here he he worked with the Rock Island Railroad, and the yard is still there. But it used to be a big railroad yard. They used to have a roundhouse. And they had a coal chute, uh, and the coal chutes were, of course, used to uh, fill up the steam engines with coal and water. My dad done all kinds of work with the with the railroad labor, work on the track, with section gangs. And his last job, and I remember because I was uh, 15 years old, he was a, a coal chute operator. And what they done is they filled up the, the, the steam engines with coal and water because, of course, they ran on, on steam. So that's what he done up until 1915. But anyway, my dad, uh, when he uh, retired from the railroad, uh, also, my dad also was a, a, a pastor, a minister. Uh, he came to the, our country here, and in 1929, uh, an evangelist came into Chicago, and they were kind of like a Billy Graham, a, a Mexican Billy Graham, uh, to the Hispanic people. And during that uh, time, my dad, converted uh, and he became a Pentecostal minister and he studied he went to school he went through 
uh, school through Moody Bible Institute. He used uh, correspondence since, you know, he had no other way. He was a, a very bright man. He only had a third grade education, but he was quick to learn. And he done a lot of things during his life. He, he was a musician. Uh, uh, he sold suits. Uh, anyway, he done everything that, you know, that he would read about. And he, he was able to do anything. He would take a book. And in fact, he built a house. He done the electrical, the plumbing, and he was a pretty sharp fellow. But like I said, he came in from Mexico. And then we were born here. My family, on my mom's side, uh, we were all born in, except for my oldest sister, was, were born here on Blue Island. As I said, my sister Angelita was born in Galesburg, Illinois. And the rest of us, my, from Henrietta to Sarah to Emo to Phyllis to Esther to myself and my sister Maria, we were all born here in Blue Island. And thank God for the Rock Island because that was the livelihood that my dad had. And of course, we went to the schools here, uh, started at Whittier School, the junior high. And back then, it was community high school. Uh, which is now Eisenhower High School. So anyway, I'm glad that my dad was able to come here and out of all the people that came to our country, you know, this is a, a melting, it's, it's, it, we, we kind of bring together different people and it, we just come together. It's a melting pot where different uh, people from all over the world have come from Italy, from Mexico, Poland, and you name it. And I think that's what makes our town a great town. And as I said, I was born, raised here. I was born 1940, went to Whittier School. And, and like I said, my dad uh, then uh, retired from church. I went to Bible college and I became a, a minister. I, I, the first church that I ministered at was in Mexico in a town called Naco Sonora. I started the church there when I was still in school in 1961. And I, I met my wife in Arizona, uh, where she was attending a Christian high school, and we got married in 1963, and God's blessed us with, uh, with uh, four children and nine great-grandchildren and two and a half great-grandchildren. And today I'm a pastor here. I pastor the Bethel Pentecostal Church. And this year, January uh, of 15, I've celebrated my 50th year here as pastor at Bethel. And uh, I thank God that my dad took this move, that crossed the border. He was young and an adventurer, but I'm so thankful that he was able to, to be here, to come here. And we were all born, like I say, born and raised in this great country of ours and uh, educated here. And hopefully, I pray that I've been able to contribute uh, to our community. And as I said, I, I graduated high school in 59 and went to school, came back in 1965 raised my children here, and I was fortunate enough to serve on the Board of Education here, District 130. In the early 70s, with others, we began a bilingual program here in Blue Island. Uh, when my wife and I returned back from Arizona, there wasn't that many Mexican Hispanic people here. There was just a, I, I always call it a handful, and uh, the church that I now pastor is a bilingual church, and I told my wife, well, until the older people die, then we'll keep it bilingual. But then in the 70s, the border broke open, and now we have a whole lot of Hispanic people here. So we started this bilingual program, and, and I know that a lot of our children today, they probably don't know how to start of it. I was one of those who started that program here in District 130. But anyway, we're here today, and like I said, I thank God that my dad came to this country. He worked on the railroad. And today we're here in Blue Island. Here Blue Island used to be a big railroad town, but today the, the railroad kind of went by the way of the horse, and it's not as active as it used to be, except for our freight trains, of course. And Blue Island has a lot of freight trains. But anyway, but I just want to share these few words with those that want to listen to the story. And uh, like I say, we, we've been here, the Hispanic people here have been here since the early 19, uh, 1900s. And, uh, we pray to God that we've contributed to our community, and we're still here to serve you. And uh, again, I thank God for my father and family, and today uh, I can say I'm glad to be part of Blue Island. Thank you so very much for your attention.
hazme un nuevo ser Me dijo no me gustas, te voy a quebrantar Y en un vaso nuevo 